Hey there! I'm trying out a new angle for vlogging um, instead of the whole corner thing. Uh, so let me know what you think. And I might still play around with the lighting because I don't know what's going on over here. But uh, today is a video I've been kind of teasing for a little bit. Um, I wanted to talk about pumping milk supply issues and stuff like that. You do actually get to see my planner today, which is not usual for a Sunday video. Um, I talked about my milk supply stash, I think back whenever it was that I did a um, project planning video about how I like set and make goals. Um, and at that point I showed you the spread that I was using to keep track of how much milk I was pumping before I went back to work. While I was still on maternity leave, I was pumping like once a day um, in the morning, like right after she'd gotten up or right before she got up. Um, and I was pumping two to four ounces every morning um, pretty regularly and was able to build up quite a freezer stash. I think I had somewhere in the area of 80 or 90 ounces before I went back to work at eight weeks. Um, is, that, is that right? Man, eight weeks. Uh, <laughs> and so for a while it was doing pretty well. Um, I was maintaining basically... Um, you know, a little, I think I was maybe for, for about a month or two, I think I was increasing my stash a little bit after I went back to work, um, or at least holding steady, you know. Um, in December, early December was the first time we had to send um, our baby to the babysitter for the whole day, because previously to that, um, our families have been great. Um, his parents, my parents have and, and us, we were taking each a day of PFL per week, and then um, our parents were filling in the gaps. And so she was at home while I was at work um, for the first, like, from beginning of, or end of, end of August, beginning of September, all the way through to the new year. Um, she was pretty much at home the whole time. Um, there were a few days in early December where she had to go to the babysitters for the whole day. Um, and... I didn't really notice a different setting that I was concerned by. But then at the beginning of the new year, everything happened at once. I ran out of PFL. My husband was working on a project at work, so he couldn't stay with her either. And then um, all of our parents were out of town, like at the same time. So she was at the babysitter a lot for the first, like most of January. She was there most days. And that was when I suddenly noticed that like she drinks way more milk from a bottle when she's at the babysitters than she does when she's at home. Because when she's at home, I come home for lunch. I, I nurse her during my lunch break. Um, and so she gets a lot from that, less from the bottle, and it was easier to keep up. Um, but after a couple weeks of my freezer stash starting to sort of plummet, um, or at least that's how it felt to me, because I get really protective over my freezer stash. I don't know if you've ever breastfed and like pumped, you may feel this way too. Like it's illogical because obviously the milk is for the baby, but I, um, like on days that she drinks less, I'm actually happy about it. Cause that means I have more milk for her later, which makes no sense. Cause I should be just happy that she's drinking what she's drinking, you know? And I keep saying worst case scenario. It's not the worst case scenario. I am a little, isn't that the worst case scenario if we ran out of milk, right? Formula isn't poison. Um, and we could just, that would be fine. It wouldn't even change anything in my supply because when I'm nursing her, I'm nursing her. You know, it would just be for whatever she's drinking extra when she's anxious about being away from me. Um, but when we're talking about something that's driven by hormones, the way that milk supply is, I think uh, it's not surprising that it's a very emotional topic for a lot of moms. At least it was for me, or it is for me. So I realized I needed to do some work to try to up my pumping supply, my, my you know, pumping output. Um, I didn't feel like I was having supply issues. Like when she was with me in nursing, she was doing fine. Um, and I didn't get the feeling that she was like hungry after nursing or anything like that. I didn't get the feeling that I wasn't making enough for her, just that the pump is less efficient than a baby. And when I'm away from her for that period of time, there was a discrepancy in what she was eating versus what I was putting out for her. So I started power pumping. Um, 
I did that. I only actually power pumped for three nights, and that really made a big difference for me. Um, I also started putting in extra sessions. Um, I started. I've been doing a pumping session every night. After she goes to bed, a couple hours after she goes to bed, I stay up a little bit later and I pump around 10, 10.30 um, before I go to bed. And between all of that, we, we've built a little bit back up and we're maintaining steady a little bit better. She's also, like my in-laws are back in town, my parents are back in town, and um, so she's only going to the babysitter two or three times a week now, instead of like four. Um, so it's also, oh, and she started solids. Um, so she's been getting better at swallowing solids and therefore I think probably drinking a little bit less milk. Um, though that process of like weaning off milk and onto solids is a months long process that we've only just started. Um, so right now I'm at a point of cautious optimism. Well, like at least I know that if my, my stash starts to drop off again that I know that I can handle it. Um, you know, I know that I can just throw in some power pumping sessions in the evening and, um, you know, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> like emotionally, like I said, like it's not the worst case scenario, but I honestly don't even know how do you shop for formula. You have to like go find a manager to get the key, right? Um, I'm like, how do you pick? I don't know. I really like breastfeeding. Like I like the convenience of it and the fact that you don't have to pay money for it. <laughs> um, plus all the bonding stuff. It's really sweet. She's adorable. Um, yes, you may be wondering what power pumping is. Power pumping is a thing that you do if you need to up your, your pumping supply and it basically mimics a baby cluster feeding, which is, um, when a baby's in a, um, like a growth spurt or about to be, um, or they're not getting enough, they will basically nurse a lot, you know, and a lot consecutively. Um, to tell your body to make more milk. So what you do with the power pumping, you pump for your 20 minutes. That's my pumping session is usually 20 minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. You pump for the 20 minutes, then you take a 10 minute break, pump for another 10, another 10 minute break, and then another 10 minute pump. So 20 on, 10 off, 10 on, 10 off, 10 on, and that's an hour. So it's a commitment of time. Um, I've been watching Battlestar Galactica and it's a good show and that's a separate point but like you find something to do um, while you're sitting there and also there's a hack if you're curious there's a hack that you can use your your pumping camisoles and bras and stuff and like tie it in a certain way so that you don't have to use your hands um and i'm going to show you how i'm using my planner to keep track um kind of anally of how much milk i have and how much milk i'm producing so that i can Keep calm about it because, you know, stress only decreases what you're outputting anyway. So let's take a look. So this is the spread that I've been using, that I was using to keep track. This is uh, last year and this is this year. Um, so basically at the beginning or at the end of every Sunday, beginning of every Monday, I go ahead and I count my entire stash, everything at the freezer, everything in the fridge, and everything that's left at the babysitter's house. Um, and so this is only from October when I started counting. You see 71, 75, it went up, it went down, it went up, it went down, up, up. And then all of these dots are just um, color coded as to who is watching her any given day. You see it went up pretty well. In December it was up in the 90s. And then she was home all the week after Christmas. And then suddenly, so I didn't, I didn't count that week because I don't think I pumped all of that week. Suddenly 62 and a half ounces down from 90. That was scary. <laughs> um, I kind of think, yeah, my pumping output I've noticed kind of goes down a little bit after I've been with her for a while. That's why I've, I've been pumping in the evenings, even on days when I'm with her. Um, because like I, I, I don't keep pumping then my body's just like oh well this is how much you need but then the pump isn't as good at like I have to make more than I need because the pump isn't as efficient you know what I mean so 62 52 then I held steady um, and then because I, I think this might be where I started 
um, interventions, as it were. Then it went down again, uh, 47, and I was starting to think about like, ah, am I going to need to start using formula in a few weeks? Because this, this was a scary drop for me. But then you see it's kind of gone up a little bit, and I'm back up at 72 and a half, which is where I was eh, back in November. So it's a... Uh, scary, but I'm, I'm holding steady and it's fine. It's fine. It's all fine. So I've been sort of keeping track. This is how I'm keeping track of how much I'm pumping every day. So this is January. January 7th is when I started keeping track. Um, actually, I can show you on my dailies too. Let's see. So on every day I put how much she ate. So I put like, this is what's in the fridge. Or no, this is what I sent, like what the babysitter had on supply. This is what was left over at the end of the day. And so that's the difference. And then I keep track of each of my pumping sessions. So that's an early morning one after the baby's got the babysitter before I go to work. Morning session at work. Uh, lunch session at home. Uh, afternoon session at work. And then evening session. And so see, on this day, she ate 11 ounces and I only pumped 7. Uh, then... Thursday, she was at the babysitter's, we were even, and then Friday, she was at home with my father-in-law, and she only drank two and a half ounces at home, and I made six, see, so the more often she's at home, the better my, my stash is. So this is uh, January, where everything was tanking. This um, row here, I write the amount that I'm pumping, and then above or below is the number that she drank. So on the seventh here, I, I pumped 10 ounces and she drank 14 ounces. And so that's the difference. And it's marked in red because it's a negative, right? She drank more than I pumped. And then up in the top column here with the date, I've marked off each week and then filled it in all the way. If she's at like away from us that day at the babysitters, filled it halfway if she, if I'm at work or away from her, but not for the whole day. And then it's um, not filled in at all if I'm home that day. So like on the weekends or days that I'm watching her. Um, so you can see there's quite a, a jump, especially on days when she's at the babysitters, that she drinks a few ounces more than me. Each square is half an ounce. Um, pretty significant. And then there's certain days here where she drinks a lot less or a little bit less. And then if she drinks exactly as much as I produce, then there's just a little, a little green dot. And if there's no green dot, that means that's a day that I pumped, but she didn't eat anything. And then these days here are the days that I started power pumping. So then we'll see a little bit, hopefully, of a difference as we turn into February. See, suddenly everything's a little bit better. Um, but then again, like this Wednesday, the day I just showed you on my daily, she did drink four ounces more than I'm produced. So um, this, this is yesterday. Pretty. So you can mark that. So that's how I do that. I was trying a system where I was like graphing how much she ate, how much I pumped, and it started getting messy because there's different contexts for each day. And so I was like drawing lines between like the same context. And just, it was a mess and I couldn't read it. So this is just sort of a plus or minus graph that I think is um, a little bit easier for me to understand. My zero point is what I produce and then what she eats above or below that. So yeah, this, this is feeling better um, since I started power pumping. And I know that I can always do that again if I need to. And worst case scenario, I can try formula. But that is absolutely not to say anything against formula moms. We're able to, I think, probably better look at the needs of their child and say, look, it's better if she's drinking more, right? Not, hey, it's better if I have more to hold on to and stash and keep forever, my precious. Okay, uh, if you enjoyed that video, then go ahead and give me a like. Otherwise, ignore that and I will see you in the next video because <laughs> they're not all weird like this. I will see you next time on Thursday. Goodbye.